Hey guys, what's up? This is Brett. Welcome to this week's episode of Friday on the Turntable. Uh, this is going to be uh, hopefully an ongoing series in uh, of a discussion of album cover design, album artwork. And uh, I'm going to start things off tonight with a UK designer, Peter Seville, most known for his work with Factory Records throughout the late 70s, um, 80s. But he's gone on to design dozens and dozens of albums, either that or he was the art director. But uh, I'm going to show five of his... Um, Five just great designs of his. And we're going to start things off with 1983's New Orders, Power Corruption, and Lies. Um, what's cool about this is he took this uh, reproduction of a painting um, called Basket of Roses by a French um, artist and he combined it with this modern approach to like code. And since the band's name and the album title doesn't actually appear on the artwork, this is a. Uh, a code for the text which continues on the back with this decoder color wheel and uh, brought into a design for those of you old enough to remember computer five and a quarter inch floppy disks you can see the design there uh, just a really clever design and uh, really appropriate for the music contained within just a beautiful beautiful image and, and that um, this little code system I should also mention carried over through the non-album singles from that time period by New Order, uh, Blue Monday, which was a huge, huge single, uh, and Confusion, and also I think on a, another factory band, Section 25, also had a little color coding thing on there, too. Uh, another one a little bit outside of his design work with Factory, um, he was involved with a couple of Roxy Music albums, and this one in particular, their final one from 1982, uh, Avalon which uh, contains just that one of the most beautiful ballads of all time more than this um, what a lot of people don't realize is this person in this like medieval helmet with the falcon is actually a woman and that was brian ferry's girlfriend at the time and uh, later to be his wife and then ex-wife so it has that just really striking king arthurian arthurian image there just great there's the inner sleeve on this one just carries the uh, band name and or the uh, band name as well as the album title with the lyrics. All right, so he was brought in in 1986 to design the art uh, to design a new, more accessible cover for this artist. Uh, his first solo albums before this always had a distorted, whether his face was melting or just really blurred image of uh, of of his face. So Peter Seville, straightforward black and white design Peter Gabriel it's a huge album from 1986 it's it's kind of symbolic in a way because not only did it have a more accessible uh, image of him but this album went on to be just huge uh, sledgehammer MTV staple in the day uh, big time and then in your eyes speaking of uh, ballads just amazing but my favorite track on there Red Rain I think it's just incredible now if you know that cover you may also uh, find some similarity between New Order's Low Life from 1985. You can see the, just a very similar approach in the design. Um, and like this was a more accessible image of him, this was actually the first time that new, any of the band members of New Order appeared on one of their album covers. So the front of this one has the drummer, uh, Stephen Morris, the back cover, Gillian Gilbert, or Gillian Gilbert. The inner sleeve then has uh, Peter Hook, and then Bernard Sumner. So similarity in the design, same guy did it, Peter Seville. Uh, a really cool image here that uh, from the band Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark or OMD. Uh, he's worked with them on several releases even all the way up until um, 2013's English Electric which was one of my favorite albums of last year. So uh, a lot, uh, several of their releases, Dazzle Ships, their first album, English Electric, including Ar um, Architecture and Morality, all have a die cut sleeve, meaning they have a cutout in there. So you can see that image uh, there, and then if you flip it around, the image will change when you put it back in, in, the, uh, in the sleeve. So really clever design, uh, really simple, really moody, it really fits. Uh, the music within it, and that's all, uh, another thing about album cover designs, is they really become synonymous with the music contained in there. And especially on the last one I'm gonna, I'm gonna show, but you know, a lot of times when you see an album cover you're familiar with, you hear the music right away because they just become just um, the one and the same. So that's OMD. 
All right, so lastly, I am going to show you what is one of my favorite albums of all time and, one of, in my opinion, one of the best album cover design. And that is Joy Division's Unknown Pleasures. If you see the design, black with just a little image in here, it really shows you that, like music, um, artwork does not have to be complicated. It does not have to be super technical and overly designed to be brilliant. And all this features uh, is an image that Stephen Morris, uh, who was the uh, who was in New Order, who's in New Order, was also the drummer of Joy Division as well as uh, three of the other members. Uh, found this um, radio wave image of a pulsating star. He found it in like an astronomy encyclopedia, and then Peter Seville took it and he flipped the colors around and put it on just a, a cloth textured uh, background here and uh, just made what's one of the best album covers of all time. The back cover is just really simple, no song titles. Factory, number 10, Joy Division Unknown Pleasures, very simple. And then on the inner sleeve is this, on the back is the song titles with their time, uh, just really simple credits. And then it also has an image or photograph of a door with this hand glowing and you can see the shadow of the hand. I'll hold that up there so you guys can see it. But that was a photograph uh, by a photographer named Ralph Gibson called Hand Through a Doorway. And for those of you that have seen um, the Joy Division music video for Love Will Tear Us Apart, uh, it's filmed within their uh, rehearsal studio. And there's always an image of a door opening and closing. It even says E and C written on it. And uh, it just makes me think of that same uh, connection there with the music video, although it's not the same door. Uh, just kind of a little um, similarity there between those two. Uh, Peter Seville, if you guys ever seen the movie 24 Hour Party People, which was de a depiction on the entire factory record scene, Peter Seville was, uh, he was first brought in to design posters and, you know, gig flyers. And uh, he was notorious for showing up, uh, as depicted in the movie, showing up, for example, if he had to uh, uh, design a poster for a Joy Division uh, show, he would actually show up the night of the show with the posters. So it didn't make any sense because there was no time to hang them up to get people there. So, But I'm sure those posters now are highly coveted and collected, collectible because they're, um, you know, it would be so cool to have. Um, okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Just a little feature on album art. Uh, Peter Seville, uh, just great designs. Thanks for watching, guys.